What happens when you let artificial intelligence edit an entire wedding gallery? We're gonna find out today together. All the images you're gonna see are exactly out of Luminar 4 and I haven't done anything at all to them. I haven't adjusted exposure or white balance or anything. They're straight out of camera and then processed through Luminar. So let's uh, let's get to it. Taylor Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Welcome to another Call of Duty Warzone video. Today, I'm going to be talking you through my loadouts for solos as well as squads. I'll also be talking a little bit about why I've actually deleted all of my weapons except for the RPG and Riot Shield. You just run it for everything, you paint it pink camo, don't even turn restock on. Let's talk about weddings. Bit of an unusual experiment today. I'm letting Luminar 4 process automatically through art its artificial intelligence. Every single image that you're going to see, I'm gonna, I'll be showing you the raw file as well. And this is the final version. This is the raw file. And it is one click. Let's go through that right now. Load up Luminar 4, one click, sync across everything. That's my editing process today. How is it going to work out across every single image that I take on a wedding? I don't know. Let's find out together right now. Also, I'll be showing you how I made that one click look at the end of the video. It only took me maybe a minute and a half. And it also includes skin softening. So in this specific case right here, this image should look a heck of a lot better because it has nice skin softening and skin AI. You'll, you'll get the, the whole picture towards the end of the video. To go into 100% preview to show kind of the difference here, I'm a little soft, but it's not, it's not unusable. And uh, it looks just so much better with one click sync across the board already. Here we are moving into the first look. We're doing both photo and video, so anytime you see me flip sideways and not take photos for a second, like right now, I'm taking taking video clips. Tim over there to the left is my Call of Duty. Uh, I guess we're a duo today, and we're doing both photo video coverage. And uh, I'm not going to show you all the video, but basically here is the scene you just saw. I wait patiently for The trick to doing both photo and video at one time is that you you just just do it. If you're interested in learning how to do video and also photography, there's a course on Patreon and if you sign up right now, you have instant access to it and you can start watching it within within minutes. I would say that the biggest thing for me to learn was specifically editing um, as well as actual a little bit of the technical capture. But once you kind of figure that out, the editing really is the the unknown, I think, uh, at least when I was first getting started. But check that out over there. All right. We're going to let this roll for another few moments and then we're going to look at a few of the images that we captured. We we're very fortunate that it got cloudy for this exact moment because as you can see it's variable clouds which is basically the most challenging style of day for photography but it, it looks pretty in the in the background which is nice. All right straight out of camera image and sliding into the edited image not changing the scene entirely just adding that little that little extra contrast and everything and, and skin smoothing as well which is which is nice. You'll also notice that the raw photos were actually a little bit blown out. I was a little bit hot and the way that the automatic, I didn't change the exposure or anything. It, this really is just a one single button click and sync across everything. And it really did a good job of managing those highlights that it kind of corrects for my mistakes. And as long as I'm within a reasonable boundary, it seems to make the image kind of exactly what I would edit to. And as we get even closer, you can see the, the eye enhancement kicking in a little bit with this one here that it just adds a little bit more drama and attention to eyes without overdoing it like could easily be done. Again, we get to the editing and how I set this up at the end of it, but you can, you can customize all that. And can I have you just hold a hand and just stand side by side there? I am personally more of a telephoto shooter, but if you are a wide angle shooter, you're going to see even more benefit from the way that this is just kind of pulling all the texture out of the sky and the clouds and the highlights. Uh, yeah. If you want to get your heads a little closer together, you can almost kiss her. Oh, that looks so nice. Again, the raw file and the edit, the AI edit. Sorry about the little bit of slant. That's my fault. It won't, it won't correct for that, but it'll do all the color things that you need. And as you can see, it really pulls the image together kind of a heck of a lot better. Here we are in the bushes. Please insert another Call of Duty sniper joke here. Overall, it just really brightens up and makes the image just ready to go. That looks great. And even if you want to look kind of that way there. Image on the right. 
the AI edit from Luminar 4 looking a heck of a lot more complete as an image than the one on the right, the raw file. And I didn't have to do anything other than hit the export button on it. All right, moving into a group shot here, vertical group shot. And uh, let's see how that does. That is the raw file. And again, just kind of just ready to go, I guess. Now might be an appropriate time to talk about just getting everything right in camera. And the closer you can get it right in camera, the better of a job Luminar 4 is going to know because it's going to know what it, what you want your file to look like. In this situation, I was a little bit too warm in the white balance, but not not too extreme, just simple bounce flash off the ceiling. And uh, again, just bring up kind of that smart contrast and that AI contrast to just make the image a lot better. And I think it's just good practice to just whatever you want your final image to look like, shoot it in camera. And especially if you're shooting video, you, you kind of have to get it even more right in camera. The last image was okay, but I felt that I had to get a little bit closer in order to kind of make the image seem a little more romantic and just nice in general. And I should also stop shooting things on an angle. Now moving into details to see if this does as good of a job on random detail images as it does on people. And I am quite honestly impressed that it takes that image and boosts it to something that I, I would be totally happy to deliver. Maybe a touch more of exposure, but again, I'm not touching anything at all. It's all automatic. That looks really good. Two examples from this spot, and the highlights are just barely holding on. And after the AI processing, it really brings back a lot of those highlights. I kind of wanted to showcase that with this. It, it brings those highlights to almost the perfect level. Now moving to the ceremony, this is just a bunch of candid photos that I just took of people. And I'm going to show you how good it does on random individuals' faces and what it actually does to eyes to just make eyes just pop a little bit better without you having to do anything at all to the image. All right, full-size image. And now moving into the close-up to just kind of show what it does to... It just makes everybody look as good as they possibly can without making it look too processed or too unnatural or really anything. So for candidates, this is incredibly helpful that you don't have to go in and retouch everything, that it just does it for you. So now Tim and I have kind of moved to the strategy where Tim's gonna roll a lot more video. I am still personally shooting video to make sure that I get my highlight film. So even if Tim didn't shoot any video coverage today, I would wanna make sure that I could still deliver kind of a good enough three minute highlight film and then sprinkling in Tim's footage as kind of almost a main video camera specifically during the ceremony, uh, you create a very, very good product, but that's enough about video. I'm gonna let this coverage roll just for a minute and then at the end of the ceremony, once um, the bride actually gets down the aisle, then at that point, I will go through some of the images for you. During the ceremony, I am always on my 70 to 200, I would say, Pretty much all the time. Destination wedding, if I didn't bring a 7200, I might be not if we're outside on a beach somewhere and I, I don't really need the zoom to get around people. But otherwise, at home and anywhere with a lot of people, usually I'm uh, on my 7200, so I don't have to run around that I can just zoom around the, the room if needed with my lens and not with my feet because that's distracting. I don't like to do anything that attracts attention to me. This should all be about the people at the front and also the bride coming down the aisle. Make sure you always get the groom's reaction shot. So right now I am getting ready to take the photo and then Tim is kind of behind me pointed uh, his video camera at the groom for his reaction as well so that we can clear that in the highlight film. And now I am getting the photos that I need and then switching to video to make sure again that I have that coverage just in case. I feel like it's just good practice. Like rely on yourself and, and know that you can deliver everything and then bring somebody in that kind of accentuates uh, the coverage that you're doing. I have the music from the scene turned off because I don't have light rights to that. And sometimes YouTube gets mad at you if you don't have the rights to things and you upload it. Here are the images of them coming down the aisle. Very nice. Let's see how that does. That looks good. It's got the nice contrast that it needs. Again, I'm a little bit warm. I wish that I could make the images a little bit cooler here, but uh, it is what it is when you're, when you're doing the automated processing. Uh, you can also easily go in. That one's a little bit too overexposed. I bring that back a little bit. Uh, you can easily go into each individual image here and adjust all the normal settings that you would. But for the case of just having a computer edit everything, I kind of just uh, let it be um, just as, as it was straight out of the camera. I will say now, if you're interested in trying this out and seeing if it works with your images, uh, that there is a seven day free trial of Luminar 4 in the description below. So get that and 
and even just try it on the images that you've called from an event maybe last year and, and see how good it does because in my shooting style specifically it it seems to be doing a really really incredible job again i can go in and tweak all the settings and tweak all the colors and the contrast and and make it everything exactly as i want it to be but as a first go i would say that this is really really absolutely incredible now moving into kind of those back side lit family formals and again pretty happy with the result that is probably how I would have edited that image. And knowing what I know now, going back, I probably would have physically moved them to a different spot because that spot wasn't as good as it could have been. But you can only do so good. Right now, the clouds came in, so now this spot is absolutely perfect in this yeah, direction. And and I'm very happy up. overall with it. I think what I like the most is just the brightness that it adds to the images, that if the image is borderline overexposed, it brings it back and to a proper brightness level. And if it's a little bit under, it kind of boosts everything to make it exactly that that proper exposure that I want to deliver. A few more photos while we're in some good light here. And as far as retouching goes and automated retouching, it really is really fantastic. All right, now moving into the hardest possible situation really for any sort of automated software to perform well in and it is when the sun is just right down the barrel of your lens and I love that that soft flare and the wraparound light and I do my best to embrace it without really trying to overdo it but I like when the light catches and kind of lights everything up nice and orange so that's what I'm aiming for right here and we're going to see how the software does uh, with a situation like this and if it would edit to what I would edit to or even remotely similar or if it does something completely different I don't know what it's going to do. Just for reference here's the video footage that is coming off the camera right now. I would say I'm very happy with the way that it handles this and for such a strange situation for it to do so well I am I'm very impressed. That was a pretty crazy. I'm going to do that one again because that one was so crazy. I wouldn't have expected it to do such a great job right there. All right, moving into the indoors, you've seen how things perform with flash, with backlight, with outside light, with natural light, all kinds of light. This is what it looks like here inside. Overall, I think that this software has done an incredible job. Comment below with what you think, if you think it's doing a good job or uh, if there's something that I could improve on my end because I feel like it's doing a great job with the files. Here's a, a final example. Uh, but again, you can customize all the color and the sharpness and everything that you want. So uh, let's move into how I actually built that, that look to just apply to every image. All right, so here we are in Luminar 4. And what I'm going to do is because I don't have an official profile, I don't have a look that I've customized, created, set up, um, which I could easily do and click, I'm going to kind of set that up with you. So um, basically I'm selecting an image that is, I would say roughly kind of the median image, I guess, the an image that has people in it, but it's kind of similar to everything else that's been shot throughout the day. So I don't want to be processing something that's like crazy backlit or something that's just kind of completely out of context of the rest of the gallery. So I'm going to create something that works for, I'm hoping everything, I'm going to show you everything. So if it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then, then I guess we're going to find out together. Uh, so AI image enhancer, if you're not familiar with Luminar, basically it just takes all the, the tools and the things that I would normally do in image editing and makes them all into sliders. Uh, we'll go through a few of them and the ones that I'm actually going to use um, on a wedding day. So I'm going to do AI image enhancer and I'm going to dial it back just, just a little bit somewhere like maybe right about there. And then I'm gonna come over here to the portrait settings. Um, it's an incredibly powerful tool for, for portraits and specifically for just enhancing skin. So I'll show you some before and after examples. This image doesn't really need it, but I'm going to add a little bit of shine removal just because I want it to, to process if there is any shine in other photos. I want it to dull it down just a little bit. All right, so as you can see here, well, we'll do the before and after. So before, kind of gray, kind of a little bit sad. And as you can see, bringing in those nice tones and the skin enhancement, it works on a number of different levels and it does a lot of different things that would take me quite a while to do in, uh, in post-production. But I'm pretty happy with that overall. I'll show you a few more examples of kind of what it's doing to skin. Um, I'm gonna come down here to the AI portrait enhancer. I'm gonna add a little bit of face light. Basically what this is doing is it finds where a face is and then it adds just a little a little dodging, I guess, to the face to bring out a little more kind of color and a little more focus to the face. Um, red eye shouldn't be a problem today. Eye whitening, I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. If it identifies eyes on people, it's gonna add 
I don't know, going to make their eyes a little bit wider. Eye Enhancer actually adds a little more kind of contrast. and I don't know what it does officially, but it, it looks really good. I'll show you again in a moment here. Slim Face, I don't want to get too crazy with it because when you start changing people's faces, but essentially what this is doing is if I'm shooting them at kind of a, a strange angle or a different angle that's maybe not the most flattering because again, this is being applied across the entire wedding gallery. Um, I don't want to be modifying people physically too much. Um, in large eyes, just a little bit. I feel like it just makes a nicer photo. I guess maybe that contradicts what I just said, but I don't know. Make If people are outside and it's a little squinty, it's a little bright, I would rather them be at the normal in large. I'm just making excuses. Bigger eyes look better in photos. Improve eyebrows. And again, not adding too much of all of this and teeth whitening, I'm gonna go just a little bit up here. So something like that, I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with. Um, I'm going to sync this across everything and I'm gonna do a quick uh, a quick look to make sure I was kind of on the right track with it. Um, I'm also going to come down here into creative and color styles. I'm going to pick a LUT. Um, I'm gonna actually pick this 1960 LUT because it, it kind of, it almost desaturates things in a good way, which means that if I'm way too hot on white balance, that it's actually going to cool it down a little bit or give kind of that appearance and make it a little more kind of gray in those, um, maybe those oversaturated parts. I'm also gonna bring it down just a little bit here. Um, and then same goes if I'm too blue, that it kind of adds, a, it, it makes, it basically, it's more forgiving on mistakes if you're using a profile like this. You might recognize this as kind of my general look and feel for most of my images. And it's surprisingly really easy to build with this LUT that just comes built in. So basically what I've done, AI Image Enhancer, I've come down here and I've done a few adjustments in the Portrait Enhancer um, as well as Skin. And then this LUT, I'm just kind of cranking it around 25%, so not, not going too extreme. As you can see, you really start to get a strong look and feel. This image is also a little bit overexposed, um, but I think somewhere that it kind of hides. I, I feel like for weddings specifically, if you ever feel like you're processing too hard and you're really kind of creating something that that has that super strong visual identity, I almost feel like it's a negative thing. So I feel like that your visual identity in weddings should be more based on composition and lighting and the, the way that you get emotion rather than just something that you build in post-production. I feel like it, it ages too quickly and you're gonna look back at your images. I have... For example, I have this lovely spot color image in one of these albums. I'm gonna do, this is my first wedding album ever, and I'm gonna do, a, I'll do a, a reaction looking through it whenever I actually have a chance to sit down again. But just know, don't build your visual style simply off post-production, that there are a lot more elements that can go into it, and for weddings, that these images are going to be important to somebody for the rest of their lives, so just, just process less. Make them look as good as they possibly can, like we're doing right here, but also don't go too heavy with your brush. I think that just about does it. I am going to, Select everything, everything was already selected. Adjustments, sync adjustments, and uh, let's see, let's see how, I guess you've already seen, you've seen the video, so you know how they came out. Um, but that's all I did. And now I'm gonna let it run through it and I'm going to hit export up here. And that's really all. It really has just done a fantastic job throughout the entire gallery. I'm, I'm really, really incredibly impressed with this. So um, yeah, like for, Kind of that one click edit. Now that I've built my look, I can save that as a as one of my favorites, and I can just apply that to an image when when I come in and sync it across everything. I would say that I'm I'm pretty happy about that. So uh, thanks for watching today. This is this has definitely been impressive. If you're interested in getting a seven day free trial of Luminar Four, there's a link in the description below. It's Luminar awesome. Four is also a one time purchase, which means that there's no subscription fee that you you buy it and it's just yours. And it really does make things a heck of a lot easier and faster. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm super impressed with this, and it's really really incredible what it can now do with one click sync to an entire wedding gallery. Um, these images were all from different parts of the wedding day, so I felt that it, it kind of essentially built what I would deliver as a full gallery. And yeah, I am super impressed with it, so check out that link in the description below, and uh, I'll, see you, I'll see you on another time, probably tomorrow, another video. Don't forget, on Patreon this month, I'm doing portfolio reviews, so if you're interested in myself coming over to your website and doing a portfolio review, um, Find out how over on Patreon and until the end of May is when the cutoff is for that. So if you sign up in May, I will do that. If it, you're watching this in June, sorry, but it might come back maybe maybe later this year. Send me a message if you're interested, but otherwise get that, uh, get that Luminar 4 7-day trial right now. Description below. See you next time.